saw you on top of somebody's shoulder. Oh. Who, whose shoulders were you on? He's a bad guy. I was an innocent shoulder stander. What are we doing here today? We're having a pillow fight. Uh huh. Uh, do you do this every year? Yeah, yeah. This is, this is my first time, and I think we've, they've done it for a while. You have a certain technique? No, I'm just going around whacking people. Oh, yeah. Just having fun, huh? Yeah, just out here enjoying myself. It's more fun than should be allowed. We're in downtown Los Angeles where uh, sort of a riot has broken up, but this one is kind of voluntary. This is an actual pillow fight in the middle of Los Angeles, and it's kind of hard to be ducking all the feathers, but uh, I think I might be able to, to do that. At a secret location in Los Angeles known only to those who participated, the organizers of National Pillow Fight Day unleashed their brand of organized chaos to thousands of willing participants eager to ruffle the feathers of their fellow opponents. Well, I actually, I, I came here with the, uh, with the Corsair Santa Monica College newspaper to cover the uh, pillow fight that's going on today. Uh, pillow fight, okay. Is this the first time you've heard about this? Yeah, I didn't even know about it. My photographer called me up and she said that there was a pillow fight going on and she asked me if I wanted to write a story on it. So I just drove down here with her and I didn't know it was going to be anything like this at all or like the amount of people that were going to be here. At a rendezvous point that we are still unable to divulge, thousands of pillow packing participants converge, each armed with their weapon of choice, a pillow filled with either feathers or down, and in some cases, a lethal combination of both. Some even dress in themed costumes so that they stand out as easier targets. We're talking about making suits out of pillows, you know, Just walking out there. David, you're almost worn out. What have you been doing here? Been preparing for this fight. It's been my first fight, my first career fight, and um, three months is not much. You should people prepare, prepare six months, but I gave myself three months, and I feel good about my fight today. What about pillows? Is that is that probably your best ammunition? Yeah, absolutely, because um, it protects my wrist and my fist, because I would hit normally with this, but it hurts my knuckles. That's why I protect myself. So it's not for them, it's for me. Yeah, so um, I came early and I saw that I could start early. I saw some uh, victims, so I started a little early, but they told me to hold on and keep my pressure in until 2 p.m. See, that's what I'm talking about. Hold on! <laughs> so anyway, uh, somebody seems to be interrupting us, but go right ahead. I'm getting rid of him, okay? I'm strong, I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, what type of animal are you? <laughs> a wolf. Uh, I should have known. In sh not in sheep's clothing either. No. You've got a pillow, right? Sheep's feathers. Uh, the feathers. Cool. The feathers. Oh, I see. The, the feathers are the secret to your uh, success here, I guess. Uh huh. <laughs> Indeed. Are you having fun? Um, lots of fun. Yes. Thank you for asking. Are you sure? <laughs> I I am sure. I think someone's gonna hit me from behind. Yeah, that's probably what this is about, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, today you have a pillow with you, don't you? I do, I do. A feather, feather and down combination. Uh, and what were you? An upgrade from last year. Oh, you've been here before? Yes, this is my second year. Uh, what inspired you to uh, attend this uh, crazy event? I love civil disobedience, and I also love um, a little bit of passive aggressive pillow action. Uh -huh. It's fun for everyone. Do you have to have any kind of training for this? You need to be able to be discreet before 2 p.m in downtown Los Angeles, and um, a real desire to have a good time. Are you doing that? Yes! Uh, now, how, how heavy do you have to hit somebody in order to get some sort of point? How does well, that work? I've been practicing for weeks, oh. um, both on the left and right sides. Oh. I'm also wearing this protective armwear. Oh. And, um, you know, I'd say 20 minutes. All right, now, show me your weapon there. What is that? Did you? Is that, oh, just an ordinary pillow, yes, right? Exactly. No, this is no ordinary pillow, my friend. Oh. This is an upgrade from last year. This is a down and feather combination. And at the very end, I tear a hole in it. 
and then unleash the madness all over the crowd. So you've been sort of hiding in the wings and uh, getting ready to do I all this? I have a strategy in place. Oh, tell me. Which I'm adhering to until now, but I've enjoyed sharing information, but I'm going to get back to the fun okay, now. Okay, have fun to this. Thank you. Ciao. I don't think that pillows have been your normal way of uh, boxing, has it? Uh, no, it's my first time with pillows, it's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah it's, um, <laughs> it's much softer, and people still love you after you hit them, it's fun. Yeah, no, it's my first fight, and I did well. Yeah, I came I, with friends. You kind of le led this thing, wait a minute, there's somebody... Uh, yeah, I, this is my family. Oh, right. They prepared me, I mean, they motivated me for the three months I told my preparation. He's my coach. <gasps> Timmy! Yeah, I did it! I and, caught um, him out of steel. You have to be a little bit crazy to be doing this, don't you? <laughs> um, just else, a little, else, you, just you, a little. You, you trust, you trust, because uh, people go for the head. Oh, that's the funny thing. They went for my head, and I'm like, no, not the head. And like, oh, he's serious. The big guy is serious. So they went for my body. Now I went for the head. How about next year? You're gonna do it again? Next year I'll be muscular. Next year I'll be prepared. I'll be big. I'll, I'll be, I'll be strong. These little ones they scare me. The big ones, I'm not scared. But the little ones that well, why you know, is that? The kids, you don't see them. Oh, uh, like I go like this. And poof, in my side, in my butt, in my leg, and that hurts. The kids I don't like, they're good. <laughs> There's one there, it scares me. The little ones, like, right, with little teeth, you know, little fingers. Oh, that's, he's got a number on his back, so remember him. You wanna see me attack him? Look, yeah, this please, is the way please, I do. go right ahead. <laughs> I think it's great, I think it's a lot of fun. It's really safe, no one's going too crazy or anything like that. It seems like really like safe, clean, fun. But I think it's also that there's like a huge mess, and I don't think I feel like the majority of these people aren't going to really stick around to clean it up. You know what I'm thinking is that these feathers are going to end up in some like motel or hotel room, maybe up on the 20th floor. Yeah, I think that, or in the ocean when they get like washed through the gutters and end up there. That could be another uh, one of our episodes. <laughs> yeah, basically follow the uh, the feathers for where it goes. Uh, you're with the newspaper, I understand. Yeah, the uh, the Corsair at Santa Monica College. Uh -huh. There are several bags behind you. I suppose that's uh, an inspiration to people to clean up all these feathers. Yeah, I, I actually grabbed a bag and I talked to the park director and she wants everyone to grab a bag and fill it up with feathers before they leave. So I grabbed a bag and, and did that. But I feel like most people are gonna be so tempted once they have a bag full of feathers to throw it out into the crowd. You know, I feel like it's gonna end up being more of a, a hazard than a help. Kind of well, thing. at least uh, it's in the spirit of recycling. Yeah, at least at least they're trying. You know, they're they're in the right path, they're on the right direction. So, the age of the participants covers many different generations, and each seems unable or unwilling to stop, even long after the alarm signaling the event's conclusion has sounded. <laughs> As the event continues, a steady rain of feathers collects on the ground, transforming the area into a winter wonderland of white. There is enough of the white stuff for kids to make snow angels on the ground, and ample opportunity for participants to engage in some good old-fashioned civil disobedience while venting their frustrations in a relatively healthy and safe manner. Is this something that's uh, actually working out aggressions? You know, I think so. I saw some like pretty like beefy, muscly guys look kind of roided out, and they were just kind of like giggling and s silly, like hitting each other with pillows in a very silly fashion. And I think that maybe they would be a little angrier if it wasn't so happy here. They'll probably sleep uh, pretty well tonight. Absolutely, man. I, I think that this is uh, it's a good workout too. You know, get those arms swinging around. So yeah, it's uh, more muscles uh, than are required to lift this microphone. Yeah, yeah, a few more. Actually, some people are really into it. They're like running around. There's a team, I saw a team of like Mexican wrestler guys. They're all dressed up like luchadores and they were like, this one guy, I tried to interview him, but he was like, his friends were getting attacked by the other guys with pillows. So he was like, oh, I gotta go protect my friends. So kind of militaristic about it too, you know? We cannot reveal too many details of National Pillow Fight Day. We can't tell you where it took place, and we were unable to reveal the day it happened. What we can tell you is that on a recent weekend afternoon, thousands of Los Angeles residents set aside their political, ethnic, and economic differences 
to pummel their fellow neighbors with pillows.